constantly, constantly covered in honey. I think I've got honey in my hair at the moment. Hi there, my name's Henry. I look after about 250 hives across Victoria. I'm gonna show you how I get this into this. Uh, I'm not in a full suit today because we're not opening up any beehives. It's too early in the morning. Uh, it's a little bit cool for the bees, so we don't want to disturb them at the moment. So urban beehives are really good for honey. Uh, there's a bit of a myth that the pollution from urban areas, we've got a bee that's landed on me here. <laughs> um, there's a bit of a myth that in urban areas, pollution makes its way into the honey, but bees don't breathe in the pollution and then put it into the honey. It just gets um, breathed back out. So urban honey is actually fantastic. So we've got a thermal camera here. What we do is, is we just go over the beehives. We can see, you get a rough, rough gauge on how they're going. So we can just see where the majority of the bees are in the beehive. So for this one, for example, they're still more or less spending most of their time in the bottom box. So there's no point in going into it just yet because we want them to slowly move up top, start storing a lot of honey there. This is just quite an active beehive. There's a lot of bees here. They're just kind of hanging out the front there. It's been pretty warm, um, but it's also a sign there might be some honey in the top relatively soon. This is a hive that we rescued from the floods. It had absolutely no honey. The bees weren't looking too well. So it's got a little feeder tray here. So we're trying to bring them back to life. You can see the watermark all along the outside the hive there. So they weren't able to leave the hive for however long. We've got a frame of honey here. We've pulled out eight frames from South Yarra yesterday from my grandma's yard. This is our setup that we've got. We've got a boiling water that pushes the hot water through into this steam knife, which warms this up so that we can then come along and cut the front sheet of this wax off. We take the wax off because the cells are all capped, uh, all filled with honey. So if we can take all the wax off, then once we put this frame into our centrifuge over there, it'll all spin on out nicely. We're always licking our fingers here. It's, a, it's sticky work, constantly, constantly covered in honey. I think I've got honey in my hair at the moment. So once we've got that wax off on both sides, then we move this frame of honey into here. And then once we fill this up with all the eight frames that we got yesterday, we'll spin it on out. <laughs> you can hear the honey starting to fly against the wall. All right, you ready for the honey? This is from uh, South Yarra. Every hive has its own unique tasting honey. It's very dependent on where these bees decided to go on forage. So each one of these buckets represents uh, a hive in someone's backyard that we help manage for them. So we do all the disease and mite checks for them. Uh, we come out, we do all the beekeeping for them. We harvest honey when we can, and then we get them 10 kilograms of honey from their hive. So it's not mixed with anyone else's hive. It's uh, honey purely just from their hive. So this is all 100% honey. Um, this is one of our buckets here. This is from this is from Chesterfield Avenue, which is uh, where I used to live. And this is the honey here that's crystallized over time. So all of our honey will crystallize over time as it's 100% honey. Um, if it doesn't crystallize, then it's not honey. All right, so because honey crystallizes and we wanna pour it into jars, then what we do is, is we take it into our warm room, which is over here, which is actually a cool room with a heater in it. So we can put our bucket in, bucket of honey in there so it can decrystallize. We've got a couple, of, a couple of tubs of honey that have been in here for the past couple of days slowly decrystallizing. So this is what it will sort of look like after it's decrystallized. You can see that's kind of gotten a bit runny. So this is our jarring machine. So once the honey gets poured into there, it'll drip through here. There's another sieve at the top, strain out any last little things. Um, it will run through this tube. You can see it's moving pretty slow. It will come down here and we've got a little foot pedal down here. We can start to jar them all up. So this is our live display hive. Uh, we take this out to schools, kindergartens. We do corporate events with it. We were out there at the election uh, with our bees and some honey. So after people voted, got their democracy sausage, they also tried some democracy honey. So you can see the queen here. She's a young queen. She, was, she only hatched a couple of months ago. Every bee in here will be a, a descendant of that bee. 
So there's three types of bees in here. Uh, there's the worker bee, drone bee, and queen bee. Uh, queen bee can live for about two to seven years. Drone can live for about three months or so. And the worker bee lives for about six weeks in the season and then about three months in the off season. We put frames in there, otherwise the bees will just build comb wherever they want and it makes it very difficult to check it. So this hive here is only a four frame hive, so very, very small considering most of our hives at the moment are either 16 or 24 frames. If you're looking at getting into beekeeping, it's, you know, it's a fantastic thing to do for the environment, but the easiest and first thing you can do is just to plant a bee-friendly garden. All these beehives here need plenty of flowers. It takes four to five million flowers to make a one kilogram jar of honey. So the first thing that we can all do is just plant a few more flowers around. Do a bee course, join a bee club, get a mentor. They're the three most important things. Um, getting a mentor is just the best thing that you can do. Learn all the tips and tricks from someone that's been doing it for years. Thanks for seeing how we do things today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing the process of getting honey into a jar like this and you appreciate it just a little bit more.